Now look, I know all the attention is on other linear fusion rifles in the game, especially Taipan. You also got Cataclysmic from the Vow of the Disciple Raid. You've got Reed's Regret. Hell, even Sleeper. But what if I told you that the seasonal linear fusion is actually one of the best in the game? And that is Cell Spy Pitch Glass. This linear fusion rifle, which deals arc damage, is one of the stickiest linears I have ever used. And that's saying something, because we got some pretty damn sticky ones. But being a seasonal weapon, it has access to a weapon pattern, thus the ability to craft rolls. But arguably one of the biggest selling points to this linear is that it can roll volt shots. And not just any volt shots, enhance volt shots. Reloading this weapon after defeating a target overcharges this weapon for an approved short period of time, causing it to jolt on its next hit. Now that's just a duration bump, but this park right here, guys, is fantastic. And today, guys, we're going to talk about why this is a linear you need to go for, even over other linears. But first, how does jolt work? Jolt is very similar to making a target volatile. And when a target is jolt, it, they take additional damage when damage is dealt to them. So you can imagine the damage over time from Thorn, but in order to trigger each small tick of damage, you have to do more damage to the target. Arcs of Lightning are also chained to nearby enemies while the target is jolted. Now Jolt lasts for 10 seconds, and from our testing, this extra damage tick dealt to a jolted target can be triggered by any teammate that does damage to the target. You may be confused at first if your teammate jolted a target and you don't see any extra damage numbers on your screen. That's because only the person who is applying Jolt receives the credit for their teammates triggering the extra damage ticks. And we actually saw this while doing damage tests on Templar after wiping. The person who applied the Volt Shot receives all the extra damage dealt from Volt Shot. Another feature of Volt Shot that not many people know about is the amount of damage a target receives per tick, which is determined by the source of damage dealt to that target. Examples? If you apply Jolt using Brigand's Law with Volt Shot, the damage per tick of Jolt will be a percentage of the potential crit damage of the weapon that applied Jolt. So for instance, Brigand's Law, that percentage is 270%. More on that later. Now, any additional damage dealt with that sidearm or another weapon will trigger damage ticks of that initial value. Now, if you apply Jolt using Cell Spy Pitch Glass, that percentage will be lower, approximately 20%. But the damage ticks will be higher. Even if you swap to another weapon and continue to do damage, that tick damage will remain the same. Now, let's talk Jolt numbers. Bungie has tuned each source of Jolt with a different multiplier to Jolt damage. Abilities, no matter the damage difference, all do 6,269 damage to Carl per tick. And this applies to melees, grenades, supers, and yes, gathering storm jolt damage is 6,269. Now granted, the lightning chain obviously does more, but the jolt aspect is very small. Now Brigand's Law does 9,717 damage to Carl per tick as jolt damage. And as we mentioned earlier, this is 270% more than the weapon's crit damage per shot, which sits at 2,618. Now Tarnished Metal does 8,150 jolt damage to Carl per tick, which is sitting at 140% more than the weapon's crit damage per shot, which sits at 3,353. Now, Cell Spy Pitch Glass. This does 58,356 damage per crit and 12,068 damage per tick of jolt. Now, this is at 20% increase, which is way less than Brigand's Law and, of course, Tarnished Metal, but it's still an increase in damage per tick. And we have to assume that Bungie had to do this depending on the weapon type. I and mean, we're talking a difference between primary weapons and a heavy weapon. If Cell Spy Pitch glass could do jolt damage, amping up to 270%, my god, it would wreck everything. Now, Volt Shot can be procced on body shots to a target, but the tick damage will still be the same if you had dealt a headshot. The amount of jolt damage does not decrease based on the damage done, but it's tied directly to the potential damage of the weapon per shot, which is why we like to use the crit damage as the gauge for the percentage increase. Now, Volt Shot can stack with other buffs and debuffs, which is very nice. So if you were to fire a tether at Carl while he is affected by jolt, which we procced with Cell Spy Pitch Glass, while that debuff is active, we see an increase not only to our weapon damage, but also our tick damage. Our crit damage in this scenario has increased from 58,356 to 75,862, while our jolt damage has increased from 12,068 to 15,688, essentially 20% across the board. Again, this damage increase only lasts for the duration of the buff or debuff, so as soon as they end, so too does your increased tick damage. You also need to keep in mind, once you apply jolt, you can't override it with a another jolt source. The damage ticks will remain the same as the original jolt proc. So you have to choose between using an ability versus a weapon to jolt the target. You want to use a weapon as you're going to be getting more total damage from jolts. Which takes us to Taypan versus Cell Spy. Listen, I love both of these linears. Taypan has become my go-to damage dealing linear this season. They're both craftable, they sit in the same archetype, and both equally top contenders for the best linear fusion. Taypan is really easy to get. Game basically gives it to you. And it rolls with things like Firing Line, which 
which is honestly one of the best parts for linear infusions as it grants you that 20% increase in weapon damage when standing next to two or more teammates. However, when Volt Shot is procced, Cell Spy also gets a 20% damage increase. So which one is better? In our testing on Carl, Jolt Ticks were procking on every shot of Cell Spy Pitch Glass. And even though you can swap weapons and proc that same amount of tick damage to proc Jolt, you need to deal the same amount of damage that the tick deals before the tick activates. It's basically a company match 401k, but for a debuff. So for every X amount of jolts, you need to do X amount of damage. Since other teammates can cause tick damage from their weapons, we can do enough damage to outpace that of firing line. But as far as raids go, no. We tested this for over an hour on Templar and it appears that there is some internal cooldown on how often you can activate jolts. We tried only a couple of people doing DPS versus the entire team laying into the Templar while jolts was active. And we can never push past that 90-95k mark. This is just the damage caused by procking jolts inside a well, which resulted in us doing somewhere around 8,508 jolt damage to the Templar per tick. And if jolt lasts for 10 seconds, we're looking at an estimated cooldown of about 0.9 seconds. That is just some basic napkin math for this cooldown. Could be slightly higher, could be slightly lower, could have rounded it up to one second, but we're sticking with 0.9. Granted though, a lot of testing was done here, so we're not just pulling numbers out of our butt. Remember, all of this is taking place just to take advantage of the 20% extra damage from Cell Spy, which technically now exceeds 20% since we're procking jolt much more often. But because tape and a Cell Spy are in the same archetype, they do the exact same damage per shot. So if your total damage with Cell Spy doesn't exceed our total damage with tape in, then tape in is still the better option. And from our testing, tape in consistently still beat out Cell Spy, especially when you consider any damage phase that lasts longer than 10 seconds. Because as soon as Jolt runs out, you're left without a damage buff, and the only way to get it back is to stop doing damage. Firing line not only requires your setup, but it also lasts the entire damage phase, no matter the length. All right, Cross, you did this entire build up. Where the hell is Cell Spy actually good then? Now, even though Cell Spy might not be the best options for raids, it's a phenomenal pick for solo and nightfall content. With the ability to jolt any target with your linear, you don't need to be on arc to tap into jolt. You can run another subclass and still jolt champions or bosses, who would then send out chains of lightning to kill surrounding ads. Guys, this is the first linear fusion rifle that is good for both DPS and ad clear at the same time. And you can imagine in arc burn scenarios how good this is. You get that 20% damage buff for Cell Spy without needing teammates. And it makes much more sense for those short bursts of damage since most enemies you encounter will either die before jolts ends or you'll be doing bursts of damage between health gates and waves of ads. And since it stacks with buffs and debuffs, you can use things like Fonts of Might, Sundering Glare, Radiance, or Weaken Effects to boost that damage even higher. These buffs also work with perks like Firing Line, of course, but still very cool to see them synergizing with an elemental debuff like Jolt. Now, some problems with Volt Shots. You don't run into this problem much on other weapons like Brigand's Law and Tarnished Metal, but because Volt Shot requires a reload to activate, if you don't have enough ammo and reserves, you can't activate it. So your final four to six shots of your linear may not have access to Volt Shots. Granted, Cell Spy does hold 19 shots without reserve mods, so as long as you have a decent ammo economy, you should be fine here. Also, targets that don't have much health won't chain Jolt since after one or two shots of your linear, they die. So we still accomplish our goal of killing a target, but it may sacrifice some of our ad clear depending on how quickly a target dies. And thirdly, Volt Shot requires some setup. You have to kill an ad, reload, then fire at your target. Technically, there are other damage perks that roll on this linear that are easier to use in some situations. Things like Vorpal and Frenzy. However, Vorpal is only a 10% buff on a heavy. Frenzy is only a 15% buff, which is still nice, but still less than the 20% damage increase that Volt Shot offers. My personal opinion is Volt Shot is the biggest selling point to this linear fusion. Combine that with the likes of either Rabbit Hits or even Compulsive Reload, and you've got a weapon that you can consistently proc Volt Shot with target after target. And as far as the battery perk goes, I wouldn't do anything here that enhances my mag size, as that's just gonna hurt yourself when trying to get that reload with Volt Shot. Instead, because Volt Shot scales with the weapon's damage, I would suggest Liquid Coils. That increases our impact, thus increasing our damage, thus elevating Volt Shot's damage overall. Cross, what about the origin trait right hook? How can we make this work on a linear? Dude, I don't even understand why this is present. It literally states dealing melee damage gives this weapon increased target acquisition and range for a short period of time. Do you know what linear fusion rifles don't need? They don't need range and they don't need target acquisition. So I wouldn't necessarily build into a right hook build or a melee based build just to take advantage of sales by pitch class. Instead, guys, lean into that volt shot, lean into that arc damage that's both killing ads and doing great damage to single targets. And when it comes to solo content and nine falls, I'm definitely going to be using sales by pitch class. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Oh, oh, oh.